Welcome to the second in the Tyrannus series of videos. In this video we're going to go through the very basic setups of how you assign a control on the radio to come out of one of the outputs on a receiver and drive something like a servo if it's on your model or something like an ESC. Now the reason I'm doing it this way is there are some very fundamental differences between the way the OpenTX software works on the Tyrannis and how it works on a more traditional radio. So it's actually useful for us to actually start looking at something that's more traditional, explaining how that works and then looking at how the Tyrannis system implements those functions. That hopefully will help those of you coming to the Tyrannis from more traditional radios figure out what the differences are and get your head around what you need to do to make this great radio work. We're actually going to start with a trusty DX7 from Spectrum and one of the little orange receivers. Now what I'm going to do is very quickly set this up and we'll actually use one of the controls on the radio to move a servo that's connected to this receiver. So let me very quickly set this up and we'll come back and we'll go through how the radio is controlling the output on the receiver itself. So here's our trusty DX7 connected to a receiver. We can see it's connected because the little light is on and I have a servo plugged into the throttle channel on the receiver. So as I move the throttle channel on the radio, the servo moves as well. So what's happening inside the radio, if we jump into the menus, we can see on the little screen that shows us where all the channel values are, the monitor, value of the throttle, which is the very top line, as I increase the throttle, we can see that the throttle control is connected to the throttle channel, and the throttle channel is output on the receiver, where it says throttle, where I have the servo plugged in, and it all works perfectly. So there's actually two or three connections being made here that by default are just there on something like a Spectrum radio. The first is that the throttle control is connected to the throttle channel and then the throttle channel is connected to the throttle output on the receiver. Now that sounds like we've just covered something that's really basic, but now we've covered that we can actually talk about the Tyrannus and how it differs. So to help me do this, I've put together a couple of slides. So here we are looking at a more traditional radio. So we have our DX7 on the left, and as we've just seen, each of the controls is hardwired to one of the channels on the radio. So the throttle control controls the throttle channel. The elevator control controls the elevator channel. The aileron controls the aileron channel, and so on and so on, right the way up to the six or seven channels that you may have on your radio. Now those connections are absolutely hardwired and you wouldn't expect anything else. If you wanted the throttle channel to be output on auxiliary one, then you could do it, but you'd have to spend a bit of time mixing the radio so that it copied the values from the throttle channel onto the other one. But by default, for 99% of the time, you're just going to be happy that the throttle comes out of the throttle channel and all the others work the same way too. On the other side, then, going into the receiver, you are confident that the value that is on the throttle channel on the radio is automatically sent across, received, and is output on the throttle output that's on the receiver itself. So you'd install your electronic speed controller into the throttle channel. You'd plug your aileron servo into aileron, elevator servo into the elevator channel, and so on all the way down. And if you're using something like a flight controller, then you'd probably plug the gear or auxiliary one channels into the mode channel on the APM, NASI 32, or whatever it is you're setting up to change the way that the board is flying. All makes sense. Standard stuff. Until you look at how the Tyrannus thinks about life. The Tyrannus actually has two lots of things that we need to set up. On the left hand side, we first of all have to set up the inputs and we have to connect one of the myriad of switches that bristle all over the Tyrannus radio. That includes three position switches, momentary contact switches, two position switches, sliders, rotating knobs, and the actual controls on the front themselves for the elevator, throttle, aileron, and rudder. You can decide which of those controls is going to control which of the channels and you can call those channels whatever you want as well. On the other side then, you then can decide 
which channel those mixes or those inputs come out of and you use mixes to control that connection. So let's look at an example. If we wanted to have uh, a standard radio setup, we might configure our inputs to connect the throttle control to the throttle channel, aileron, elevator and rudder to their appropriate channels as well. That would make sense. They're the four default controls for pretty much every model we're going to fly. And then we wanted the switch one to be our mode switch. And we also wanted switch four to be our light switch. And again, we can decide whatever control is going to be output on those channels. Once we've set up that input part of the screen, then we go into the mixes part of the radio and connect those inputs to the outputs on the controller. So in this example, I've configured it so that the throttle is going to be output on connector one on the receiver, aileron will come out on connection two, elevator and rudder will come out on connections three and four respectively. The lights will plug into connector five and I'm going to have my modes for my flight controller come out on connector seven. And we can decide where each of those wants to be presented on the receiver itself. So you have to do those two steps when you're setting up a model. And normally those are two steps that are absolutely set up and hard coded in a more traditional radio. And those are the two things that when you first come to a Tyrannus or open TX based radio, blow your mind a little bit that you have to manually set those two things up. So if we think about the radio and the menus that we're going to have a look at in a second, there's actually 12 main places that you can go to to set up the model within the radio. There's the first one, which is model selection. That's where we're going to choose the model memory. So that's where all the models are listed out and you can just select the one that you're going to fly today. There's model setup, which is where you do things like set up the name, timers, standard stuff like that. Then there's a heli setup, one, which is where you would set up the kind of swashes that you have, the swash mix, etc. Uh, flight modes, we're not going to cover that today. We're going to talk about inputs, which is we've, we've just explained is going to connect the controls to the channels that we want or the controls that we want. Then we're going to look at the mixer and the mixer is where we connect the inputs to the outputs. The servos is an interesting one. That's where you do things like endpoints and trim, and you can absolutely set the physical limits of where a servo can move to. So if you do something wacky in one of your mixes as you're setting things up, you don't overdrive a servo and cause a problem. Curves and global variables, we're not gonna talk about in this video. They are a more advanced topics that we'll do later in the series. Logical switches, again, is something that we'll do later on, but logical switches are quite cool in that rather than having to assign a physical switch to one of the channels, you can create a logical switch. And a logical switch might be something like maybe you have lights on your craft and you want the logical switch to come on if the telemetry says that your battery voltage is becoming low, then you can set it up so that if the battery voltage comes low, that logical switch is flicked and turns the lights on on your craft so you can visually see when it's time to come into land. There are special functions. Uh, special functions is really good fun. We're going to play with that later in the series. That's where you can set up things like sound events and play WAV files and even music if you really wanted to. And then finally, telemetry, where you set all the telemetry up. Now that looks like a heck of a big list, but actually all you really need to be concerned about are these ones that are highlighted, one, two, five, six, and seven. And that's what we're going to have a very quick look in the video. So the model selection, model setup, setting the inputs, setting the outputs via the mixer, and then having a quick look at how the servos run to do things like endpoints and trim. If you only play with those five areas, and one of them isn't really an area, model selection is just a list of models, then if you play with those four areas, then you'll be able to set up and change what happens with your model. So now we understand that, let's go back to the bench and configure the same scenario that we've just had with the Spectrum, where we're using the throttle to control the servo that's connected to a receiver with the Tyrannus. 
So let's set up the radio so that we have a similar thing with a servo plugged into the throttle channel. We're actually going to be using one of these little things. This is a D4R2 receiver, does telemetry as well. Uh, we'll go through and set the model up on the radio, connect the radio to the receiver, we'll do the bind process, plug the servo in and show you it all working. First thing we'll do is turn the radio on. Welcome to Tyrannus. Throttle active, stabilize mode. Now, to get into the model screen, because we'll create a new model for this, we click Menu, and then here is the models that are listed. At the moment, there's only one here that I've been playing with, which is called Test Bench. So we'll create another one. So we'll navigate down to an empty slot, press and hold Enter, and we'll click Create Model. Now, in this version of the firmware, it has a wizard which helps you set up each of the models for whatever craft that you're going to be using. Now this wasn't on the earlier version so you had to manually connect and configure your inputs and then manually connect and configure your mixes so that your con throttle controller or whatever it was was connected in the right way to your receiver. This is really nice. In the latest version of the firmware this wizard works really well. I would say if you try this and it doesn't appear like this, go back to the very first video in the series and flash your firmware. So I'm going to select um, just a general everyday plane. That will work for me. I'll click enter. Then it's going to ask us a series of questions about the plane configuration and it allow us to change it. So has your model got an engine? If we clicked enter, we could actually change it to no or yes. And the cool thing is if we then go down and navigate to the channel and click enter, we can also change the channel on the transmitter that the throttle or engine will come out of. I'm happy to keep it as channel one. So that makes sense. Click page to go to the next bit. It'll ask us, has your model got ailerons? We'll keep it as yes, but again, we could change the channel output. Click page again. Has your model got flaps? We'll say it hasn't. Click model again. Has it got air brakes? We'll say no. And then finally, the tail configuration. Has it got a classic elevator and rudder on the tail? So you can see beautiful little picture here. Channel three is for the elevator. Channel four is for the rudder. Hit page again. It'll say, this is what I've set up. So throttle is channel one, ailerons, elevator and rudder on two, three and four. Press enter, long to confirm. So we press and hold enter. And there is our new model set up called model zero two. So now what we'll do is we'll actually bind it to the receiver as our very first job. So now we're in model two. What we'll do is we shall select page and what we can actually see here is very similar to the radio that we looked at at the start. You can actually see all the channels moving. So I see my throttle is connected to channel one. I can see my rudder is connected to channel four. I can see my aileron is connected to channel two. I can see my elevator is connected to channel three. So that all makes perfect sense. If I go out of this and then press menu, then as I select page, you'll notice that what I'll do, as I've got model 02 selected, we'll look at those screens that we talked about in the slides. So here's one of 12, then we have model setup, where we'll come back to in a second to actually bind to, then we have heli setup, flight modes, the inputs, which is where it's actually set these up. So if we actually look at one of these, the throttle, for example, I'll hit enter, Then here's the throttle. So the input name is throttle, the source is the throttle itself, and the weight is 100. So basically 100% of the value of whatever is on the input is going to be put on the output. Don't worry about the rest of it for now. Obviously this is where we do things like set expo, but that's how it works. We just exit out of that. Next page then is the mixer, and again, here are the individual mixes. So these are the outputs that we talked about. So if we again look at the throttle, then here it's actually called the channel engine, which I think is quite a nice way of doing it, keeps you sorted. The source name is throttle, and that is the input that we've just looked at that was configured. A weight is again 100% of the channel value goes through to the receiver. There the offset, the curve, the other bits and pieces. So 
that's how the radio is actually configuring each of the inputs and outputs and the setup's been done beautifully for us. Press page again, there's the servo mixing and you can actually see as I move the channel 1 value it's going from 988 microseconds to 2012 microseconds. Hit page again, curves we're not going to look at, grub variables we're not going to look at, logical switches we're not going to look at, special functions that's where you do your sound and then you've got your telemetry at the end. Press it again we're back to where we started. So we've got model 2 selected we'll hit page and we can either go down all the way and again we could set the model name up here if we wanted to um, in fact we will, we'll just call it something like test so we'll click enter and then we can if you want a capital letter you press and hold enter there we go and then here we can also do things like change the model image so I hit, hit enter here are all the different models that we've got I'll change it to something like uh, Bixler and again these are models that you can actually download and put on the radio and then you can set things like your timer and everything else now if we go right the way to the bottom of this menu you'll find that we have an option to bind so here we are so the mode is important the mode is how the radio talks to the receiver so d16 is the one that you use for the bigger channel receivers this little guy will actually talk d8 only put it outputs eight channels onto this little receiver you get the eight channels over the sbus connection otherwise it's the four channels out the one two three four at the side it's great we'll go then down to bind and hit enter so to bind what we need to do is while the radio is chirping we need to apply power to the receiver while pressing the little button in the corner which is called fail safe so let me just put the power on make sure you get got it the right way around little red lights blinking you let go of the fail safe then we'll unplug the receiver take the radio out of bind and now if I plug in the throttle into the first channel so I'll just pop it there so we can see it pop that into channel 1 be careful of polarity at all times power the receiver again you see now there's a little green light that's come on as I move the throttle the servos moving so now we have what we have with the spectrum but now we have it with the Tyrannus. Now if we just exit out of there, you can see we have a little Bixler, we have it called Test, and that's how we set up a very simple configuration. And we can also see things like the telemetry has automatically started working, so we can see the BEC is actually delivering 5.22 volts into the receiver as well, which I think is about right for that BEC. So that's an introduction into how to create a simple model, connect it and bind it to your receiver, set up the inputs and the outputs, and we've talked about the differences between the Tyrannus radio and a more traditional setup. In the following videos, we'll go into more of the details and the functions, some of the menus that we haven't had a look at, but also we'll talk about some of the special things that you can do with mixes. Because although that sounds like there's a lot of extra steps and configuration needed to do what a traditional radio does very simply, it actually provides a fantastically powerful way for you to decide how the radio controls your model and to create some really cool things and fantastic effects. So thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.